Hey guys, with everything in the news, I thought I'd show you how a very large container ship steering system works. Right now I'm chief engineer on a roughly 110,000 dead weight ton container ship. That's the similar weight of the Dahlia. We're a little longer, more powerful, not as wide, different number of containers, but this is generally this, a very similar setup that you would find on there. And um, I'm gonna point things out to you, show you how they work, why losing power, why they lost steering. So what I've got here, let's see if I can show you that good. I have two electric motors, right? And they are completely and separate independent electric motors that go to two different pumps. This is my rudder horn here. And then I've got my oil storage tanks back there. There are low level alarms on that. There's a number of alarms on the system in general. You can see there's these giant hydraulic rams here. Let's try to get you. There's four rams into this giant system in this block. And this is an incredibly redundant system. The way all the controls are set up, everything is set up for failures. So what we're gonna look at here is I have my, this is my emergency control panel, or the, I'm sorry, this pump, the number two pump, is my emergency steering unit. What that means is electrically, it is fed from my emergency switchboard. My emergency switchboard is live all the time. It's from, fed from the main generators. What will happen in a blackout is the emergency diesel will start up after a certain amount of time and power the emergency switchboard. It's roughly 30 seconds. My ship is about 20 seconds till the lights come on and this motor would be able to be restarted. There's different regulations around the world that's what most of the large ones are gonna do. So again, I said there's multiple redundancies and the way the cabling is run, it's very hard to do everything backwards. This cabling on this side, this is the port side of the ship. This cabling runs up the port side of the ship. And the reason for that is the other cabling for the other motor, which is fed off the main switchboard, runs up the starboard side of the ship. And the reason you do that is if you're ever in a collision and the cables are severed, you have an alternate supply. So here we are, here we see the number one steering motor controller. It's on the opposite side of the ship. The cables run to the opposite side of the ship. The control cables from the bridge run down opposite sides of the ship so that, again, if you lose one side, if there's a fire on one side, you have the other side. Now, like I said, most of the time, or I shouldn't say most of the time, both pumps are available normally all of the time. One, this is my number one, is fed exclusively from the main switchboard. Number two is fed exclusively from the emergency switchboard, but the emergency switchboard is fed from the main switchboard, which is fed from the main generators. Only in the event of a blackout does that emergency generator kick on and then provide power. So with everything in the news, I am doing a monthly two hour load test of, a, of my emergency generator today. We decided let's test our stuff. So we came down here and we timed how long it takes to move the rudder on with the emergency generator actually turning it. And we have a different, um, we have a slow speed and a high speed, and we did it on slow, which is our worst case scenario, and from midship to hard over was less than 30 seconds. It's much, much faster on high speed. It's much, much faster on two pumps. Um, when we talk about redundancies, ships have a steering wheel, and there's a number of linkages that we'll see up here. These feed up to the rudder angle indicators on the bridge. You just turn the wheel, you wanna see how much the rudder turns. There's two of them, that's redundancy. If those would fail, both of them fail, there's what's called a non-follow-up. And a non-follow-up, I have non-follow-up controlled here. 
they also have that on the bridge where they can just tell the rudder, go left, go right. I don't know how far it's going, but they'll see the ship swing. They know the rudder is going left and right. And again, redundancy again, I have that on the other side back here. My worst case scenario, all of that fails. All of that fails for, for whatever reason. And I could somehow power this motor. I could come over here and grab these handles and move the steering gear myself. That would be an incredibly unlikely scenario. And like what happened in Baltimore, you wouldn't do that because nobody's back here. Um, we're, oh God, we're, we're probably 150, 200 feet back from the house. So it's, it's not like somebody's gonna be here quickly and do that. And you have so many electrical redundancies already and everything's gonna happen automatically that you don't need it. Um, what I wanna emphasize though is what you see is you see two electric motors. You have to have electricity to steer. You can't move something this big without power. And what power is electrics the most common? And it's duly redundant. So what happened on the ship in Baltimore, their main power supply went down. They would have lost the one electric motor. What they should have had happen is the second motor become available after that emergency diesel starting. And we don't have the report out. I don't know what happened there. They should have had control after about 30 seconds of the rudder. Hopefully that answers a lot of questions and uh, comment for more information.